Welcome to my channel, I'm Scott, and in this video I am going to walk you through the process of valuing meta material stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. Meta Materials is an advanced materials and nanotechnology company. The technology it uses is holography, lithography, and medical wireless sensing. It creates solutions with functional materials that can enhance block or absorb energy for a wide range of applications including medical, automotive, electronics, clean tech, and aerospace. It is pioneering a new class of materials called Meta Materials. It develops its products using computer algorithms using the desired material. It uses artificial intelligence software to design a library of patterns for different applications it typically develops new custom solutions within hours versus most companies that take months. It is currently creating glasses for Airbus to help pilots avoid glare while in a cockpit since that can compromise their vision and cause serious problems during takeoff and landing. That product is called Meta Air. It is also working on lithographic technology to help automatically de-ice and defog electric vehicles. Ice and fog make it harder to see, plus it adds weight to your car. It has 149 filed patents and 8 registered trademarks. This company was funded by a SPAC, a special purpose acquisition company is formed to raise money through an IPO, then acquire a private business to help them go public. This is also known as a reverse merger or reverse takeover. In June 2021, the merger was completed and Meta received $160 million in cash proceeds. The SPAC that acquired Meta was Torchlight Energy Resources. The company is headquartered in Nova Scotia, Canada and was founded in 2011. It trades on the NASDAQ and Deutsche Börse. Let's get started with the model. This is a small cap company, 1.3 billion market cap. They're trading at 456 a share and they have 280 million shares outstanding. Let's look at their financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. I don't have their complete financial information. I just have the first half of 2020 and the first half of 2021. So I just doubled those numbers to get their full year financials. So they have negative free cash flow in both the years. Net income is the profit or loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses, and that's negative in both years as well. Revenue is a sales for the company, and that's pretty small, 1 million up to 2 million. This is the company's income statement. This column is the second quarter of 2021, and this is the second quarter of 2020. This is the first half of 2021 and the first half of 2020. So in the first half of this year, they only had $24,000 of product sales. Most of their sales are from development revenue. This is revenue paid to the company for completing certain milestones in its contracts. They haven't gotten to the point where they're manufacturing in a larger scale. They're mainly in the development process right now. But once they develop the products and complete testing, then they'll start manufacturing in their facility. They have a new HQ facility that's 68,000 square feet. So there's a lot of room for research and development and also manufacturing. So they generated 1.2 million of revenue in the first half of 2021. Below that is the cost of goods sold, which is really small because they haven't produced many products at this point. They have much more expenses in R&D. That was 3.4 million versus 1.9 million last year. Their biggest expense was GNA, 5.7 million. These are all the costs not directly tied to making the products. Payroll for its employees, rent, and insurance are all examples of GNA. And they spent $700,000 on marketing, which is more than double last year. And this should go up a lot over time. They're not going to be marketing to the end user like me and you. They're going to be marketing to companies like Boeing or Tesla. They spent $880,000 of interest on their debt. They passed through a really big loss of 40 million, but this is a non-cash item. 19 million of that was from a convertible promissory note, and 17 million was from convertible debentures. These securities are like bonds that can be converted to equity. The investor receives interest on their securities, 
But if the stock price goes up a lot, they can convert that debt to equity. The stock price was 66 cents back in December 2020. When the stock price got over $3 a share, the holders of the convertible securities converted from debt to equity. This helps the company because it lessens the debt on their balance sheet. And it doesn't cost them any money, it just dilutes the current shareholders. So when the investor converted the debt to equity, they probably just sold the equity in the open market and took in the cash gains. This is a big benefit when a company's stock price goes up. Its convertible debt converts to equity, which lowers their interest payments in the future because now that debt is equity. So they have a net loss of $49 million in the first half of 2021. But I'll show you in a statement of cash flows that they didn't lose nearly this much cash. This is the company's statement of cash flows. The top part is operating cash flow. That's how much cash the company loses from its operational business. And the way you calculate operating cash flow, you start with their net loss, and then you have to add or subtract the non-cash items on the income statement. You have to add back that $40 million since it was a non-cash item. You have to also add back stock-based compensation, depreciation, and amortization. Even though they reported a loss of $49 million, they actually lost $5.6 million of cash flow. This is what you should focus on, how much cash they lost, not their accounting loss. And since they're building out their factory and product line, they invested $3 million in CapEx. CapEx is investments in property, plant, and equipment. This is how I figured out their free cash flow for 2021. I took their operating cash flow of negative 5.6 million minus 3 million, and then I just doubled that number since this is the first half of 2021. And this shows you the proceeds the company received from the reverse takeover, $147 million. That money is gonna really help this company continue on as a viable entity. This is the equity section of their balance sheet. They have $368 million of equity. They raised $454 million from selling their business and they lost $87 million from running their business. Let's look at the capital structure. They have $368 million of equity, $6 million of debt. They're 99% equity, 1% debt. Their net debt is negative $149 million and their WAC is 7%. That's the lowest WAC on Finbox and that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated six years of future free cash flows. We also estimated the terminal value, which is all cash flows past year six, that's 1.4 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $990 million. We divide that by 280 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of 354. They're trading at 456, so they're trading at a 29% premium. It's a sell according to the model. According to one of the company's presentations, the metamaterials market by 2027 should be $6 billion. So if they have 10% of that market, which is pretty high, but if they do get 10%, that's $600 million of revenue. That's how I got their future revenue estimates for 2027. Then I just cut that number in half in the prior years to back into that 600 million. And the average company converts 10% of their revenue to free cash flow. So I multiplied the revenue estimates by 10%. That's how I got my future free cash flows. I figured they would have negative free cash flow in 2022 and 2023. Of course, this is an estimate, and the stock price is really what people think it's going to be worth in the future. And since they don't have stable free cash flows now, it's anybody's guess on what the future may be. This is where the stock has been trading the last 12 months. So it was under a dollar a share. The stock really shot up when they merged with Torchlight. They also did a one for two reverse stock split, so I don't think it was ever this high. It was probably half this, so maybe it peaked at around $10. When a SPAC announces it's gonna take over a company, the stock price shoots way up, then it comes back down. Since the merger, the stock is down 45%, while the S&P is up 7%. Yahoo also compares this company to three other companies. One of them is down 21%, another is up 165%, another is up 1%. 16 million shares have been traded on average the past three months. Of the 280 million shares outstanding, 138 million are on float, 7% are held by institutions, and about 8% of the shares are shorted. The short percentage peaked a few weeks ago at 9%. Now it's down to below 8%. And the only insider activity was from Michael Graves. He sold 300,000 shares. And he's part of Torchlight, not Metamaterials. 
The two biggest shareholders are Thomas Welch and Ann Lambert. They both own 17% of the stock each. Then Lambda Guard Technologies, Innova Corp, and BlackRock. So these two individuals own over $200 million of the company's stock. They're both on the board of the International Conservation Fund of Canada. I'm not too familiar with this fund. So if you live in Canada and have more information, let us know. But they invested a lot of money in this company. I can only imagine the people at this fund are probably good friends with the CEO of Metamaterials. Let's look at their financial ratios. We can't look at the PE since they have negative net income. They have very little revenue, so they have a terrible price sales ratio. They have a good price to book since they have a lot of cash from the recent capital raise. And it looks like they acquire a lot of companies. They have 222 million of intangible assets on their balance sheet. They have a high current ratio, and quick ratio of 2.6. They have lots of cash in their balance sheet, 154 million. They do have a lot of current liabilities, 87 million, but they have a lot of current assets to cover that. So they have 143 million of working capital. It does seem like they should be able to get through the next few years without needing to raise any more capital. So to summarize, I have them trading at a 29% premium, but their technology looks amazing. If it really does what they say it will do, this company is going to be huge. But we hear this a lot with a lot of companies. So you could make a lot of money swing trading. Now that Facebook is changing their name to Meta, a lot of people are buying this stock because they're confused. They think it's part of Facebook, which can only help investors. I'm really excited to see the technology they develop and how this stock progresses in the future. I rank their free cash flows, revenue, and ratios 1 out of 10. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.